to everybody who's been liking the videos so far. We thank y'all. You guys liking the videos, it's kind of helped us start to grow the channel even more. So we appreciate it. To those who have not, please, we ask you, hit the like button before you even watch this video. It helps us grow the channel, helps people learn about us, and, and allows us to make more great content like this. So that's all we got. Thank you for helping us grow this channel. Hit the like button right now, and uh, on with the show. And we are live. What up? What is good, my man? What's up, man? Same shit, <laughs> different toilet. Like it's been a while, man. I know, I ain't seen you, man. I ain't seen you, man. Where you, where you been hiding, man? Where you been hiding? You know, living life. My computer is working perfectly now. Let's go. You know, I'm back in the building. Let's go. Back on the block. You see, all you just, it always starts working as soon as you start saying the shit ain't working. It's like. Yeah. He's like, yo, I'm about to sell this shit. And shit just started working. <laughs> yeah, everything is back, you know. So I'm I'm um uh, I'm good to go. Maybe that's the key to, to, to keeping your gear. Once your gear start acting funny to all the people at home, you know, put out into the universe that you about to sell the shit. <laughs> it gets scared. <laughs> <laughs> Cause as much as it don't like working for you, it don't want to work for nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you start talking that shit, put that in the universe, man. I'm about to just sell this shit. Next time you turn it on, that shit will be working. Pristine. Yeah. It's working perfect. For no reason. You wouldn't have done nothing mm -hmm. different other than just tried it on a different day and it should just be working. Yeah. But nah, that's yeah. good. A lot of anxiety when your shit ain't working, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it sucks. It yeah, sucks. Yeah. I ain't been doing shit but driving. You know what I mean? <laughs> getting that paper <laughs> yeah yeah get my money my money's starting to get right you know what i mean uh, like i'm learning how to how to drive efficiently mm -hmm. you know which is a big part of you know being a driver you know and uh just know how to manage your clock how to get in and out of places without getting stuck yeah or lost you know like, people have no idea how easy it is to get stuck in a truck you know, you be seeing a truck somewhere like, how the fuck you get in there? Like, <laughs> truck driver be looking helpless. Like, I can't get out of here. <laughs> that was me my first two weeks. That's funny. I was turning down streets like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> An hour later, I finally get off the fucking street. Like, damn. You know, it'd be mm. three o'clock in the morning. This shit have to be Baltimore. My first time out solo. I was like. I thought the street was a different street. It was dark. I turned down this street. It was a one-way entrance to a, a storage uh, thing. And I was like, yo, uh, this shit is fucked up. No way out. <laughs> Narrow-ass lane. I was like, oh. Couldn't see behind me. It took me literally 45 minutes to turn that truck around in there, man. I was sick. Like, I didn't want to call nobody. I was too embarrassed. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that don't happen to me no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that yeah. shit happened a couple times. You'd be like, uh-uh. I'm about to look at the Google Maps. I'm about to look at the satellite view. I'm about to have all this shit. Nope. Nope. You know, and, uh, you know. But yeah, shit been getting better, man. So, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just rocking, man. You know, I, I kind of like the job. You know, I never thought I would actually like a job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's fucking weird yeah. as shit. Like. I did you have a chill as shit? Like I was just driving around and shit, drop things off and Hey, how you doing? How you doing? What you got for me? Got to know, okay, yeah, cool. All right. Pull it or die, you know. Yeah. So shit been cool. But, you know. Tight, tight. And I'll keep everybody posted. But uh, you know, it's been going good, man. I think I've I've officially been driving for two months now. Nice, nice. And so uh, you know. Had my good days, bad days, but uh shit's pretty dope. Yeah, and, uh, me and the wife are babysitting the grandchild this weekend. Damn, already? Yeah. Damn, babysitting. Well, yeah, well, um, my uh, my father came up from Cincinnati to see him, brought him some gifts and stuff. Oh, nice. So we thought we'd uh, we keep him. It's, it's still it's yeah. still weird. It's still weird that it's. <laughs> It's still weird that it's my grandson. You a like, grandson? Yeah, you granddad. You old man. Like, now, yeah, you're not man, even old. Not... You mad young? So it's like, it's yeah, funny as I'm hell. still young. Yeah, I'm still young. <laughs> and it's like I'm holding this little baby, and like, yo, like you are my son's son. Like this yeah. is it's super it's super weird. Yeah, it's still weird. 
what's even wilder is like your son had his son at the same time uh, same about the same age you had your first son yeah straight up <laughs> yeah <laughs> so imagine how your pops was feeling holding your son <laughs> right <laughs> right same situation like same yep. age gap kind of you know yeah pretty much yeah so it's wild yeah it's wild. all right folks so this week we're gonna talk about something that uh we don't think anybody's really been talking about on the hip-hop side of things mm-hmm. you know i don't know if it's because ain't nobody really had a discussion people scared to say it but i know it's a real thing out there and this week we talking about band camp friday burnout mm. we know about band camp friday if you're an independent artist You've been releasing music for the last two years, you know, since the whole COVID thing, you know that Bandcamp Friday has been pretty much a staple, you know, for mm-hmm. those who sell MP3s as well as, you know, physical goods on the Bandcamp platform where, you know, one Friday out of every month, they uh, waive their fees and uh, try to get more artists to promote selling their music on those days. And yeah. uh, it's been growing. It's fucking it's the damn it's an institution at this point yeah yeah but i came across uh i've never done it Elogic has participated in many times mm-hmm. um but this week i stumbled across an article about it that i thought was pretty interesting it was called uh it, it addressed band camp friday burnout and so in this this uh episode we want to talk about band camp friday burnout we're going to read this article we're going to summarize and we're just going to chop it up about our experiences and what we think about some of these uh points that they bring up so uh sure. we will take a break and we'll be right back you yep. We got you stuck off the realness, the most infamous, you heard of us, official podcast murderers, the show comes equipped with few points to share, grown man ideas for all those who care and want to grow, so go ahead and download, every single week with a brand new episode, you're not alone in this world cousin, so we share information and honest discussion, and keep repping the culture, like we supposed to, they spread gossip but they never come close to, I can hear it inside their tone, they talk about the industry but never left their home you get laced up with bullet points and such plus empowering topics that they never would touch you can put your whole network against the team but super duty tough works the mvp most valuable podcast on mp3 priceless info but all of it's free so take these words home and think them through super duty tough work is coming at you now listening to Super Duty Tough Work with your host, Blueprint, raw and uncut, adult conversations, no shucking, no jiving, and no bullshit. All right, folks, we're back. Pritnificence, the logic, Super Duty Tough Work podcast. Today we're talking about the band. Fridays in band camp burnout. I'm going to read this article. It's from RA Magazine. And the title of this article is A Digital Flea Market. Why are some artists and labels experiencing band camp Friday burnout? And I'll start from the top. It says content. Now, this is a uh, uh, electronic uh, blog. So don't expect them to be naming no hip hop names in this article. It's probably going to be some people you ain't never heard of. Just as a heads up. (laughs) So it says Cotton, Amelia Hot, Zake, and others reflect on the unforeseen downsides to the platform's ongoing generosity. As Bandcamp Friday continues into its third year, some artists and labels are questioning the generous scheme's long-term impact on independent music. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Bandcamp Friday has become an institution in certain musical circles. The scheme, which began in March of 2020, saw the online retailer waive its fees on the first Friday of every month as a way to support artists directly at the height of worldwide lockdowns. But when Bandcamp announced the scheme's continuation through May 2022, the response was mixed. Following a proliferation of tweets and think pieces, resident advisor reached out to several artists 
DJs, and label managers, as well as Bandcamp itself, to get their thoughts on the future of Bandcamp Friday. For independent musicians, the value of Bandcamp Friday has been undeniable. Its success took, also took the company by surprise. We didn't expect it to be much bigger than previous fundraisers we've held, the largest of which had $1 million in sales in over, two, in over 24 hours. That was our ACLU fundraiser, COO Josh Kim told Resident Advisor. That first day, fans ended up buying $4.3 million worth of music and merch, 15 times our normal Friday sales at the time. And it was incredible to see such an outpouring of support for artists. When it became clear that the pandemic wasn't ending anytime soon, we decided to keep it going until the pandemic let up. For American ambient artist Zake, Bandcamp Friday, Bandcamp Friday was a welcoming, incredible approach in response to our current artist world's artist struggles. They proactively approached their much respected de decision to waive their revenue shares to help artists and labels alike during a time where touring came to a halt. I have incredible respect for bank. I have incredible respect that Bandcamp led the way in helping artists when they didn't have to. Mm. But now as parts of the world return to some semblance of normality, feelings have changed. I believe it helped people helped a lot of artists survive during the shutdown year. But now that music spaces are open and everything is feeling more normal, I feel the impact of Band Pant Friday has decreased. DJ and artist liaison Amelia Holt told R.A. Dylan Kooten Foot, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> Kooten. <laughs> I don't know if it's Kooten or Cotton. <laughs> Dylan Cottonfoot. Maybe it's Dylan Cottonfoot, a.k.a. Maybe. Cotton. Put it more concisely. I think the magic has worn off a bit. More than just waning of interest, UK artist Dennis Huddleston who runs 3-6 Recordings, sees Bandcamp Friday as partially responsible for fostering an unsustainable model for artists. Mm. I now try to actively avoid releasing anything on Bandcamp Friday because it has a real risk of getting lost in the noise, he said. It's become a digital flea market, forcing us all to scream for attention. I've spoken to many fellow artists, and the vast majority of them are tired of the monthly Bandcamp Bazaar. Part of the pushback is the creation of a scarcity model on the first Friday of every month. Over time, Bandcamp Friday has become sort of a forced competition of getting noticed in the sea of releases. And of course, it's really easy for smaller artists to get lost in all the noise, said Cottonfoot. He added, it also feels like often artists are scrambling to get a release ready in time for one of the Bandcamp Friday drops, myself included, which can be really frustrating. People should be releasing their work when they feel completely ready and to not have to feel like they're chasing deadlines in fear of missing out on the opportunity to get noticed or generate income. Huddleston agreed. It's so dehumanizing to have to compete with other artists, other artists like this, especially since many of us are friends and ultimately want each other to succeed. Ultimately, not only does the music suffer, but there's actually less money in our pockets, too. Sure, there's a spike on Bandcamp Friday, but sales are down noticeably on every other day of the month. It's classic short-term game for long-term loss. Part of the problem may be that Bandcamp has created a monopoly on supporting independent music. Bandcamp solves a very real problem in the industry when it comes to offering convenience for artists and listeners in a single marketplace, says Cottonfoot. But I also feel like it's gotten to a point where the platform now dictates how large, how a large amount of listeners and artists transact and to some degree are controlling consumer demand. It feels a bit risky to be relying so heavily on Bandcamp alone in the long term. Another unanticipated side effect has been the abundance of emails on the first Friday of every month. This may seem trivial, but Zake said it's made doing PR for an independent label increasingly difficult. Bandcamp Friday slows, slowly morphed into just another day, but with massive amounts of notifications still flooding into the point of annoyance, he said. And that is what scares me the most. Bandcamp notifications are one of the most valuable tools we use to promote new releases. I fear, even if, even if it's not a Bandcamp Friday, Bandcamp notifications have lost their value. Mm. Huddleston doubles down. Look at it from a listener's perspective, too. Once a month, they're getting bombarded with a ton of new releases, release announcements in their inbox. These are from artists they follow, so presumably they want to support them, but they'll struggle to even find time to listen to them, let alone buy them all. So fans get overwhelmed, anxious, and ultimately 
just disable the notifications entirely to avoid having to deal with it. These seem to be two major prongs of critique. To be the two major prongs of critique, the need for artists to create more content and fans inundated by the notifications. Still, Kim contends that measuring the success of Bandcamp Friday requires viewing it in the aggregate. We think it's great if an artist wants to use a Bandcamp Friday to release or promote something, he said. But our goal with Bandcamp Fridays has always been to give fans a chance to rally around and act on the idea of supporting the artists they love. And we see from a volume of sales on Bandcamp Friday that they, that they continue to accomplish that goal. Cottonfoot sees Bandcamp remaining as a key platform, but he liked to see its payment structure shift. I would happily swap Bandcamp Fridays in exchange for a lower transaction fee year round on the platform, he said. But he also understands that it can be precarious to rely solely on a single platform. In the long run, I believe it's tricky since Bandcamp already has so much momentum and most people are currently defaulting there to seek out new music, he said. But I've recently been made aware of some tools in development that are making it easier to integrate digital music sales and downloads with Shopify stores. If I continue selling music and merch online, I'm going to consider trying something like this out in order to diversify the way fans connect with my music. The end. Word. Word. Hey, Logic. As someone who uh, has participated in Bandcamp Friday, many of Fridays last year, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts when you uh, hear this article? I agree with everything in the article. <laughs> On all sides, um, <laughs> yeah. When <laughs> when Bandcamp Friday initially <clears throat> initially um, started, you know, like they said, it was something, you know, because of the pandemic to help, you know, cats rally around the favorite artists that they promote mm -hmm. or that they support. And um, this is when I started releasing my beat tapes too. I was using that that time to release my beat tapes. And the first Bandcamp Friday when I released a beat tape. Mm -hmm. I made probably about six, seven hundred dollars just on that Friday off of that one product alone. Yeah. Not counting other products. So it was something at that time that I think the fans were using as well to support artists because, you know, nobody was touring. Nobody could tour. You know, there was there was everything was just shut down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people used it as a time to catch up on things that they hadn't, you know, albums that they haven't got from artists that they supported, so on and so forth. Um but over time, I noticed that, you know, because I did it probably three or four um, Bandcamp Fridays in a row. Mm -hmm. And I noticed with each Bandcamp Friday, the sales would decrease. Mm. It would still be a it would still be a probably one of my highest days of the month. Mm -hmm. But it would still it was still decreasing till after a while. I started to feel like I had to do a sale. I had to do something in order to utilize that day, you know, to maximize money for that month. Mm. And as as I continued, then I started to be like, I don't, I, I'm getting lost. You know what I'm saying? Because it, like they said, it's a lot of noise. And you know, there's a couple times <clears throat> that I purposefully released some things earlier in the week, you know, and then maybe did a sale on Bandcamp Friday, but didn't do a full release on that day, yeah. just because I didn't want to get lost in everybody else's sales and everybody else's, you know, um, new projects that they were putting out. And then after a while, I just started to not necessarily, you know, care about it as much because it did feel like I was starting to rush things, um, you know, and I felt the pressure of trying to put something out that day. When mm. In reality, my fans are going to support me whether it's on Bandcamp Friday or not. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Granted, the fees are there, mm -hmm. you know, if I, if I sell it on a different day, but the fees have always been there. It's not like it's something new where they got these fees now and you know yeah. the fees have always been there yep. you know what i'm saying so you know I, i've come to the realization that if i do use it i'm not going to use it as frequently that way it'll be something special if i do ever use the Bandcamp friday thing again but it's not my focus anymore because for last year it was my focus you know like it was it was a day where i knew i could make good money and i utilized it yeah yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, like I was always watching what you were doing with it mm -hmm. from afar, you know, because yeah. I'm like, you know, I was in the same boat. Obviously, last year, shit, the last two years, pretty much everything was shut down for me as an artist, which is why I have a job now. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> you know, I wasn't making the bread. I was just making, you know. And so, uh, mm -hmm. but I was always curious about the Bandcamp Fridays. And when it first happened, yeah, I was like you, I had, um, I don't, I don't think I had as many projects that I could have done, like you had your beat tapes, you were working on beats and you kind of had some stuff assembled and you were, you had a lot of, a lot of stuff sitting there that you could easily right. adopt and, and, and test it out with. I didn't have that at that time, at that point. So I couldn't just jump in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't have the releases that I thought kind of fit. So I always kind of watched you and I've always been curious about it. And so, you know, today's conversation is something where, you know, I'm, I saw this and I was like, I wonder how, a logic can you know can compare to what these people are saying and like you're saying yeah. everything in an article on both sides i agree with you know yeah. it, it brought some great attention to artists um but then there's some negatives that kind of go against some of my fundamental ways of doing business my yeah. philosophy you know that has helped that helped me you know survive for 20 years as an artist things that that go against those those little rules i have in it and we'll talk about that in here um because some of these things uh, you should be aware of if you're an artist. We're not telling you to do it. We're not telling you not to do it. We want to have a discussion to where if you decide to do it, you can do it the best way. Uh, yeah. Maximize it without sacrificing uh, what you have already built. And right. so uh, we got some points, some bullet points and such that we're going to go through. And the first thing that I, I pulled from this article was how they spoke about uh, it's an unsustainable business model. Mm -hmm. That is entirely true. Um, yeah. what, what they mean by that is that if you start to, uh, to, to put together a strategy for releasing your music that's based on a monthly spot, a uh, monthly band camp Friday, uh, what ultimately happens is that you start feeling a sense of urgency in your music to get it out, to try to take advantage of these monthly sales on Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. um, and it rushes you into a process of creating and assembling your music. That's not sustainable. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't make sense. I mean, like my my second and third beat tape aren't nearly as polished and put together as the first one. Because I was kind of trying to rush to put them together mm -hmm. in order to sell them for Bandcamp Friday. Like the first one and the last one that I did. And the last one, I didn't even release it on Bandcamp Friday mm. for that specific purpose. So the first one and the last one are the best ones that I did. And the second and third one aren't as good because they were rushed because of that same reason. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it makes sense, right? Like. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things that kind of, like I mentioned, that stopped me from doing it. Because I had one thing I was like, okay, let me start working on this. And then I, then I just stopped like, yo, why am I trying to rush putting this thing together just for one of these band camp Fridays? Right. And then it was making me not even think about the other sides of releasing a project, which are, you know, we talk about on this project, whether it's your, 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 your campaign, mm -hmm. you know, my campaign was like band camp Friday. Yeah. The end. That's it. <laughs> yep, that's it. That is it. And when you when you do things like that, you actually sell your music short. Like Bandcamp Friday can can work as one part of your strategy, but it should not be your whole be all end all, your whole campaign. And I right. think that's what happened to a lot of artists because it's pushed them to just, okay, I gotta get something ready for this month, gotta get something ready for next month. Oh man, I'll just push this out. The next thing you know, you got all these releases. And as you mentioned, it's harder and harder to put together releases that you're truly, truly, truly proud of because you're right. rushing. And then it's harder to just create under that kind of pressure. Right. It's not sustainable. Right. It's not good for music. You know, that's point number one. Uh, point number two, which you mentioned as well, and they mentioned in an article, is just too much noise, too much competition. Yeah. Um, what I find to be wild about Bandcamp Fridays uh, is that remember like three, four, five years ago uh, when the music industry decided that they didn't want to do Tuesday releases anymore. Right. And they moved everything to Fridays. Right. And so you had all these major label pieces, uh, 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 artists uh, releasing their music on Fridays now. Mm -hmm. And everybody just blindly followed. 
Yeah. And I remember being one of the first people to say, I'm not going to release nothing on Fridays. Um, yeah. And I was like, the reason you don't release music on Fridays is because ain't nobody writing or publishing no content Friday and Saturday. Facts. You want to be taking advantage of the conversation that happens Monday. If, if Monday through Thursday are the highest traffic days on the Internet, why the hell aren't we releasing music on those days? Why are we trying to release it on Friday just because the major label people say they want to release it on Fridays? Might work for Beyonce. Yeah. Might work for Bruno Mars. <laughs> you know? But I don't know about Blueprint and the Logic. <laughs> I mean, any fucking day of work for Beyonce and Bruno Mars. Yeah, it doesn't they can matter. release on a Saturday. Yeah. You know, Sunday morning they can drop a, a fucking album. <laughs> Come on, it going, it, yeah, it's platinum. Yeah. It's for you, yeah. me and you, we got to maximize these other things. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And so what I found weird about Bandcamp Friday is that we're 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 going back to Friday. Mm-hmm. For, and after we after I've already settled the discussion that Friday is not good for us, but I'm going to break that rule now. And instead of releasing early in the week so I can have more conversation and more time to, to speak to fans about to create more awareness. Now, nah, instead of doing that, now I'm going to go back to Friday just because Bandcamp is waiving the fees. Right. Right. And in the midst of doing that. There's now all this competition again. Yeah. All this competition. Instead of, I mean, yeah, somebody could say, oh, yeah, sure. Post your band camp links. I'll support as many of you as I can. But everybody, everybody got unlimited pockets. Right. Yeah. Like they might, they might get five to 10 people depending on the price of whatever their, you know, their project is, whatever they're selling. Yeah. Max. Yeah. Max. You're not just going to buy everything, but there, there is competition because resources are limited. And so I didn't like the fact that it was kind of pushing us into this, onto this date where there is the most competition. Mm-hmm. But like you said, the benefit is that you now have more eyes on certain projects that might not have uh, gotten it, you know, right. like maybe you wouldn't have released your beat tapes at that point if it wasn't for something like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. you weren't going right. to promote like you promoted your vocal album. So maybe it worked in that context. Right. Um, yep. but the sacrifice of, of doing it on that day is that you now are lost in a sea of a bunch of motherfuckers competing for the same eyes and ears on the same day, on the same platform, the exact same way. And, and I mean, to add to that, like you said, then you're still competing with the major labels that are also releasing records on Friday. Yes. No matter, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that Friday, just because it's Bandcamp Friday, yeah. there's still other releases that are being released because the major labels release on Fridays. So you're also re- competing with that noise as well. And most of the major label artists and labels have gotten smart enough to get them a Bandcamp page as well. Yes. You know, so yes. you're dealing with that, you know. Beyonce got some b- shit on Bandcamp. You know what I'm saying? Like these <laughs> these month, you know what I mean? Like the yep. Benny the Benny the Butchers and the Conways, they got Bandcamps. You know what I mean? Yep. So the cats that are really selling, you know, really good records, you competing with them too where, you know, and they selling shit for $100 for their download mm-hmm. as opposed to 10 bucks and people are still buying it. They spending that $100 with them instead of with 10 of their friends, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, too much competition, too much noise. So uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Or This is your weekly reminder that we have two books that you as a listener or watcher of this podcast need to absolutely own the first is the 10 traits of successful hip-hop artists and the second is the social media cheat code both of these books were released within the last year the 10 traits of successful hip-hop artists is a book where i go through the stories and explain the traits that uh, are behind the success of some of the biggest names in hip-hop today um the book has got nothing but amazing feedback. And if you are an artist, business person, whatever you do, if you would like to be inspired and would like to learn more about hip hop along the way and also see some some reinforcement of the concepts that we talk about on this podcast, 
the 10 traits of successful hip hop is for you. Second book is the social media cheat code. That is for everyone who listens to this podcast, who does not uh, consider themselves an expert or really good at social media. It's not for super experienced people. It's actually for people who are on social media, but are not getting the results you need. So what we did is I broke down like 12 or 13 strategies that I use all the time that actually work really well for me. I put it into a book. I gave you examples and I tell you how to implement it. That's a book you absolutely need as a listener to this podcast, watcher this podcast. If you're on YouTube, supporting these books actually goes a long way towards supporting the podcast. So uh, to support the show, if you like what we do, obviously we don't necessarily get paid to do this shit. So support the products and services that we create. And these two books are a big part of that. We appreciate your support and uh, back to the show. All right, back on the block, the most infamous podcast on planet Earth. Super Doobie Tough Work, Blueprint, Herb, Illogic, Bandcamp, Friday, Burnout. Are you suffering from it? Are you feeling listless, tired? Do you feel tense every time somebody brings up Bandcamp Friday is coming up? You feel pressure and anxiety about pushing music out that you know isn't ready. If so, you may be suffering from Man Cat Friday burnout. <laughs> Sound like one of those commercials <laughs> where uh, <laughs> where people like you know get uh, as old diseases. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lexator. <laughs> <laughs> if you answer yes to any of these questions. Please call. One eight hundred. Fuck Bandcamp. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the next the next uh, point, which we kind of touched on earlier. Um, that is very interesting, and that I think we all can admit happens. Number three point is that Bandcamp Friday has caused many artists to rush their releases yeah now this doesn't apply to people who had something already ready to go and it was in the tuck and it was assembled and it was like you was 100 percent satisfied with it this don't apply to y'all right but we know that there are artists out there myself included who literally thought about putting out music or artists who had put out music to try to capitalize on a band camp friday that was coming up and you know in your heart that you would have taken way more time with that music if that band camp Friday wasn't coming up. Facts. You know, you would have been way more just like, eh. you might have actually put together, a, you know, an actual campaign. Mm -hmm. You might have rolled it out a little slower. Yep. You know, um, taking more time with your album covers. Who the fuck knows? All the things, might maybe shot a music video. All the things that you typically do to promote from video content to more audio to interviews to press to 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 everything the way you roll out your merch bandcamp friday uh has caused many artists to rush their releases and i think that's one of the things that i'm curious to see how it plays out when if and when bandcamp friday ends mm -hmm. you know will artists see that that is what they did over that period where they kind of feel like man i could Maybe I should re-release that. Maybe I should do that properly. Maybe I didn't get out enough light, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think there's going to be some people realizing maybe they rushed it. And some people saying, you know what, you know, uh, that was cool for what it was, but I'm off that. I don't want to feel that pressure. No more. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, one of my beat tapes, honestly, and this is, this is the honest to God truth. I put together the night before a band camp Friday just to have something new to have on there. And yeah. I mean, it was it was good. You know, the beats were dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I didn't put it together the way that I would have done if I would have taken at least even a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To like yeah. really structure it and add, you know, skits and yep. you know things like that. You know, vocal samples to kind of tie everything together. I literally put it together the night before just to have something. And I was I was toiling around with the idea all week. Yeah. You know, and the night before I was like, yeah, let me just put something together real quick, you know, and I literally did it the night before one of them. Yeah. And and I, I would bet that what you're saying is not even uncommon. Mm -hmm. I would bet there are a lot of artists who have done that, you know, 
Yeah. And I'm curious to see to our listeners if you have done this very same thing because I've thought about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got a gang of beats and music I've done. It's just that my process of like, like you're saying, yeah, you got a bunch of music done, but that's just the beginning of a project, right? Like for us, we take the music now, then we're going to take a few weeks just to sequence it. Yeah. Then we're going to be like, oh, this goes, and then we're going to be, okay, each song is sequenced. Now let me do some album order sequencing. Yep. Then we go, okay, well, this transition that, okay, then we're going to keep adding things to make it kind of flow better. And that's hard to do overnight. <laughs> You're not doing that Facts. overnight. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Over- and then the mastering process yeah. is another couple weeks, you know. Mixing, mastering, if you want to mix it, like, you're not really getting to do all of that stuff that we normally do with a piece of music. If you right. feel like you got to get it out by Friday or this band camp Friday. Um, and I think that some, uh, there's going to be a lot of sacrifices that you make musically. And I think that if this didn't exist, a lot of people would make those sacrifices. Facts. You know, very true. That's number three. Number four point about band camp Friday burnout is Less money made. There was a, a a quote where he in this article where he said it's it's uh I'm gonna try to read this quote back, which I thought was a dope uh one. Uh he basically said it's the he said, sure, there's a spike on Bandcamp Friday, but sales are down noticeably on every other day of the month. It's classic mm-hmm. short term gain or long term loss. It's facts. It's facts. Because some people won't even buy music during the regular times of the month. They wait till Bandcamp Friday thinking that it's helping. And it is helping. No, yes. don't, not to say that it's not helping at all. But if you spread out your purchases for the artists that you support, you for one, you can support more artists. Yeah. You know, and for two, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't put us in this box where. It's like, okay, well, Bandcamp Friday is my biggest day of sales. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and now all these other factors are involved, you know, the rushing of projects, things not being, you know, sounding as good as they should, not being in the right orders, all of that stuff. It puts us under pressure because we know that that day is our big money day. Mm-hmm. So we got to have something in order to make good money on that day. Like this, this last band camp Friday, I didn't do anything. Yeah. And I still got some, you know, some good sales, but you know, yeah. I noticed the difference, but whenever I, whenever I, um, whenever I um, promote anything else, as long as I promote it correctly, it doesn't matter if it's band camp Friday or not. Right. You know, as long as the people can see it, they're going to support it. But, you know, using that day is it puts a lot of pressure on you. That's unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. I've always looked at like albums is like this thing where. Even if it doesn't hit when it came out. If you put it together properly, it will sustain itself over time and yep. even gain ground over time as more people discover it, rediscover it, realize that, yo, I fucked up missing out on this one. This is a gem in the catalog. Mm-hmm. And so that has kind of always led me to like never sacrifice the short term. You know what I'm saying? The sacrifice the long term for the short term. Yeah. And sometimes th- these kind of moves can push you into that short term thing where, like you're saying, if you broke, you functionally unemployed as an artist, you need bread. Yeah. You got equity in your name and in your catalog. And what you're going to do is you're going to cash out some of that equity with a quick little release. Yeah. And maybe you didn't put everything into, but it's cool. It's solid. You know, it ain't whack. But your fans want to hear it. They're going to support you. Boom. But what happens is that when you don't put that same level of craft into like that you put into the best things in your catalog, mm-hmm. what happens is it is you 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 sacrifice the opportunity for people to come back later and talk about those projects like they talk about the the biggest, most no, uh, you know, uh, the the biggest, most popular things in your in your catalog, right? Like people love those those certain records that you have, right? And while they may not want you to make the exact record over and over again, they do want the same level of craft, right? Right? You know what I mean? Same level of polish, yeah, yeah. polish. And yeah. so if you don't do that, you're just cashing out. You're cashing mm-hmm. out a little bit of your equity, and you have to be careful because you cash out too much equity. You ain't got nothing left. Yeah. You know, and so, 
and less money is made. So like the longer, the, the, the more long-term strategy is to take your time with everything, make everything, every shot counts mm -hmm. because it's not just about bank and Friday. It's about how this record adds to my entire catalog and the story of my entire career. Yeah. Thanks. And I need this thing to bring attention to everything before it and everything after it. Yeah. And like you said, like with the equity, like that was a great way of putting that because that's one of the reasons why I haven't released anything else in such a long period, mm -hmm. you know, not really a long period, but because last year, you know, I was hitting cats in the head with something new, like every month, every couple months, Yeah, you know, on top of re-releasing re the Celestial record. So, you know, I have a new record that's ready. I have an instrumental album that's almost done, but. I'm letting my fans breathe a little bit. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know bro. what I'm saying? Letting them breathe a little bit and catch up and maybe listen to the shit that I did release last year. All the beat tapes and, you know, the other, you know, smaller projects over the last couple years, actually, with the whole Bandcamp Friday thing. Yeah. So I'm kind of taking a break. And, you know, I was planning on releasing something in spring, but I'm, I, might, I may give it till fall now, you know, just to just to let people breathe a little bit, you know, yeah. and not be hitting them over the head every damn day with something new. It's it's hard, you know, because the fans get burnt out, too. Yes. Yes. You know. Yes. And and they have a way to know. They may not be able to say it, but they know when we put in a lot of effort into some shit. Facts. They know. And uh, whether we, they can tell just by how we set records up. Mm hmm. You know, like that's why sometimes I like doing like like trailers for projects. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's like you do a video trailer. People be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to come with it he's back <laughs> let's go you know right, a little right. teaser of the song and some trail just a suspense because yeah. you know you can't do all of that if you don't care you, mm -hmm. you're not gonna do all of that if you if it's just a quick money grab yeah when motherfuckers see that they'll be like oh shit let's fucking go he back okay mm -hmm. what's the release date you know <laughs> But we just when it's Thursday night, you know, midnight, you be like, "Hey, I'm dropping something, man, camp tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Get it down. The end. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. it. That's it. The conversation starts that day and it kind of ends a day or two later. You know, what I mean, it doesn't last as long as like that thing you can do. You know, and you ultimately make less money because you have you get that big hit up front, but then over the long term, it doesn't perform like the records in your catalog that you put more craft into. Facts. And uh, I think when you look at any artist who's had a long uh, career, they all have a record or two in their catalog that basically keep them alive and afloat forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they have that one joint in there where people are like, yeah, that's that shit right there. I discovered them because of that. Mm -hmm. And I went back and listened to their other shit because of that. Yeah. That's them at their best. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, sacrificing long term uh, feelings like that with our fans is what happens when we, you know, take the short term bread. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Right. Quick announcement. Over the last several years, we've been asked many times by the listeners of the show if we would ever open it up to the public for advertising. We've always been interested in this, but we never had the systems in place to make it work properly. I'm proud to announce that we are officially accepting advertising from the public on Super Duty Tough Work. Meaning, if you're a small business owner or an artist, and you'd like to create more awareness about your product, service, or release on a Super Duty Tough Work podcast, we're now in a position to do that. For more information, email us at Super Duty Tough Work at Weightless.net. Again, that's Super Duty Tough Work at Weightless.net. Email us there. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you would like to promote, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible to let you know if we think it's a good fit and what the next steps are. Thank you for your time. Back to the show. Okay, let's finish this joint out. Yeah, folks, we are back. Super duty, tough work. Blueprint, a logic. Talking about Bandcamp Friday burnout. 
We got two points left. Two points left. And uh, this next point, point number five, is something that we talk about on this podcast a lot in the past. But the, the issue number five with Bandcamp Friday is over dependence on Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. Y'all know me. I'm one of those people who's an advocate of having your own platforms. You know, having your own email list, having your own website, maintaining your own blog so you can tell your own story running on YouTube, creating your own video content, however you do that. That's just a reflection of my philosophy, which is to control as much as you can so that you ain't got to go through all these fucking paywalls. You ain't got to go through all this noise to directly talk to your fans. Bandcamp Friday goes against my personal philosophy a little bit. Like, depending on it, it's kind of like, I sell MP3s on my own site. (laughs) I get it. I want to take advantage of it, but I'm like, and I'm not saying participating in it makes you dependent on it, but I know that there are artists who are dependent on Bandcamp Friday, especially now. Yeah. After you, two years of conditioning has made a lot of people put their releases into the box of how do I work this around Bandcamp Friday? Yep. How do I send people to Bandcamp? You know, how do I use Bandcamp to communicate with my fans with these notifications? Because they're not maintaining their own email list. Mm -hmm. You know, they're using Bandcamp. And uh, that's tricky. That's tricky and dangerous, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I mean, personally, you know, because I've tried to go the route that you've went, honestly, I just can't afford it. I mean, and there there are other platforms that have you yeah. know um, that have you know ways that you can utilize that. But Bandcamp is honestly it's convenient. Yep, and you know it's it's so much easier to throw that link out there and have everybody you know go to one spot, one link, and they can have access to all your music. But it is also like you said, it is dangerous to only be dependent on that one platform. Because what if Bandcamp go down tomorrow? Hey, we never said we never thought MySpace was going to be done. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it can happen. And the fact, you know, I don't know what this deal is with Epic Games that they have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like when you start having other entities start to inject themselves into a a certain business model, as much as they say nothing's going to change. Yeah. In five years, some shit going to change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In 10 years, some shit going to change. And it may not exist in the same way that it exists now. So it's always better, like you said, to have your own shit and be in control of your own shit. That way, if every if the rest of the world, you know, burns up, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Bandcamp no longer exists. I can still buy a, you know, a, a pragmatic, you know, album. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not dependent on that. So it is it is dangerous, but it's also one of those things where you got to do your research and find other platforms and other ways to, you know, create your own. That way you're not dependent on it. It's just, it's just convenient. You know, yeah. it's out of convenience. You know yeah. What I mean? And, and, and I get it, you know, like the, the software, the interface, the way it's set up, it's fucking dope. They're on top yeah. of that. They're on top of a segment of the market for a reason. They put incredible money and, and, and innovation behind what they do. Mm-hmm. So I never knock Bandcamp. All my music is on Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. But all my music is on my website as well. You know, my digital, right. my MP3s are on Bandcamp. I don't sell physical product on there. You know, um, I've had times, I was an early adopter of Bandcamp. I was mm-hmm. one of the first people, like, oh, was it 06, 07? When I was doing like my, my, uh, I think it was Name Your Price things for mm-hmm. like Blueprint Who and um, yeah, uh, the Blueprint versus Funkadelic. I used Bandcamp for those, you know, yeah. and they were very successful, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the the electric purgatory EPs, yeah, Bandcamp very heavy with those. Name your price type shit back then. Um, so you know, I I respect them greatly, but I understand like you're saying the risk and the danger of what happens if the rules change one day. Mm-hmm. What happens if they they release content ID and they start saying like these samples can't be here, right? What if Bandcamp starts? You know what I'm saying? Like what this could happen overnight. Yes. They integrate some technology where all of a sudden every sample on your project is getting recognized like on fucking YouTube and you like, damn. 
I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. I can't post this on bank. You, you gonna how are you gonna make money? Yeah, then where are you gonna go? Yeah, you ain't got shit set up. You out of the game. And so you know, and that's just band camp. I feel the same way about everything. Same way about yeah. Spotify. Same way mm-hmm. about you know what I'm saying. It's like be very careful about being overly dependent on any one platform that you don't control to make money. Um, that's just my philosophy. Yeah, um, and it's it's just like you know, there's some of these younger cats that have no physical, you know, product to sell other than maybe t-shirts yeah. but none of their music is physical everything is dependent on you know dsps yeah and you know between that and Bandcamp, that's all they have and if all this shit doesn't exist anymore you have no music mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying the, the fact that you know most probably a good a good percentage of younger cats that are just you know rapping to be rapping most of their stuff, they most of their stuff, you can't buy it on CD. Yep, no you much. can't buy it on vinyl. Mm-mm. You all, it's Spotify. You know, it's Spotify and Bandcamp, or you know, SoundCloud, or you know, all of these digital platforms. And none of these cats really have have you know any physical uh, merchandise. Like I remember not too long ago. I mean, it was a while ago. I was touring with you know a cat, and um, he had no merchandise, and he was like, I just you know refer people to my um my um my um, Spotify page or my band camp or, you know, whatever. And it's like, dude, like we're on tour. People got money like, in their pockets. <laughs> right. Like, you, how are you going to eat? You, you know what you, I'm saying? You p- turning down money to send them somewhere where they don't have to pay for your shit. Right. Make it yeah, make like sense. It's, it, yeah, it didn't make <laughs> sense to us at all. You know, so, you know, that's just one of those situations where, you know, you have to be cognizant of your opportunities and, what you're in control of because all this shit can be gone tomorrow and then you ass out. It's true. It's true. So yeah, that brings us to the last bullet point of the evening, which is too many emails and notifications. Good. Googly moogly. You think you're the only person on Bandcamp sending out that email notification on Friday? You're not. (laughs) You're one of thousands. Yeah. Anybody that buys Bandcamp Music off Bandcamp is getting notifications from every artist that they bought Bandcamp music from. Yeah. And as a result, Bandcamp Friday is going to have a lot of people getting too many fucking emails. Yeah. You're not emailing no other time. You're not emailing no other platform. And uh, they're going to be tired of it. Yeah. They're going to be looking like, okay, I know. Or it's like, yo, if you wake up and there's fucking 10 notifications about new music, are you going to go buy all those? You're going to read all 10 of them? No. No, not at all. Ah, it, ma- it makes it seem uh, not so special. Yeah, it's, it's like spam at that point. Yeah. Whereas if you'd have sent that same email on a Monday, mm-hmm. release your project on a Tuesday, people are not getting that many notifications then. Right. But if you're doing all this shit on Friday, the same day everybody else is doing it, the same way, same notification, same platform, there's a chance that the people you're trying to get uh, to listen to your project will just not even check for it because they're going to be inundated with too many fucking emails. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that helps anybody. No, because like they said in the article, some people just, you know, turn off the notifications altogether. So, you know, even... When it ain't Bandcamp Friday, they not they not getting notified no more. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You're that that um that day and that overindulgence in notifications has turned a lot of people off. Literally, mm-hmm. you know, have them turn the shit off <laughs> to yeah. where they're only getting what they want to get because they're actively searching it out. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, you know, before Bandcamp Fridays, a lot of people did pay attention to their Bandcamp notification. Oh yeah, you know. Because it was it it wasn't an everyday thing that somebody was you know putting yeah. out a record. So, but yeah, I've personally turned off any general Bandcamp notification. <laughs> I turned them joints <laughs> off because I was getting a lot. Because I do follow a lot of people, and yep. I have purchased a lot of things from a lot of people on Bandcamp. And I personally have turned off all the general notifications just because it was too much for me. Damn, damn. Yeah. And if a logic turned that shit off, you know it was too much. This man's. <laughs> supporting everybody he's like fuck this it's too much leave me alone get up get up out of my inbox 
<laughs> Facts. <laughs> but yeah, man. So that's it. That's it for this week, man. If you are a an artist and you use Bandcamp, I hope you found this uh episode, you know, inspiring, informative. We're not trying to tell somebody to not use Bandcamp. Uh, we're not hating on Bandcamp, really. We're just trying to provide a counterpoint and to have a conversation that a lot of people seem to not be having in public right now. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anybody having this. You know, you know, and so if you're a music fan, we want you to continue to support artists. Uh, obviously, not just on Bandcamp Fridays, uh, not just on Bandcamp, but support them. And uh, artists, take artists in consideration and, and try not to become too dependent on, on Bandcamp or get burnt out on it. And if you do feel Bandcamp, uh, burnt out on Bandcamp Friday, nothing wrong with that shit. Yeah. It's natural. It's real. You ain't the only one. Facts. Take some time off like we taking off right now. Like, me and yeah. Logic don't be posting shit in 2022. <laughs> we ain't post not a damn thing. We ain't promoted nothing. None, none of that shit. None. none of that shit. This is yeah. it. This podcast is really my only social media thing right now. I'm taking a fucking hiatus. <laughs> it feels yeah, good. Man. You know. It feels so good. No yeah. pressure. You know, I'm just doing, getting my music all together so I can release some music soon. And I'm just kind of falling back on social media because we went so hard the last two years just to try to keep things yeah. afloat uh, with, yeah. with the music industry's collapse you know and so uh, this year I think we have uh, we're taking a well deserved break and yeah. don't feel pressure to put out nothing just cause it's a band camp Friday think long term not short term mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see y'all next week Work. peace, peace. thank you for listening to super duty tough work Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Follow the podcast on SoundCloud. Peace. Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work, huh? <laughs>